Today, I'm joined by Ron Thompson, the Chief Data Officer and Deputy Digital Transformation Officer at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, better known as NASA. He's a big supporter of ACT-IAC and continues to give back as a fellow in that community. And finally, not to be overlooked, he's a Scoutmaster for the Boy Scouts of America. Ron, I'm so glad you joined me today. Thank you, Jeremy, and thank you for having me out today. Really appreciate it. So for those who haven't met you, share a bit about yourself, where you're from, uh, who you are, and what you do. Okay, great. Uh, well, Jeremy, I am, uh, you know, obviously the title. Uh, I've been in uh, federal IT for about uh, 30 plus years now. I've worked in uh, seven different agencies, and my latest is NASA, by the way, loving it. Really, really interesting story and in, about our mission, and and as you can see, what's in the news, right? With a Mars Perseverance lander uh, just happened a couple of weeks ago, and by the way, get ready, we'll be launching a helicopter from that lander in about a week's time. So stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, part in in that helicopter, Jeremy, is a little part of the Wright brothers' first aircraft. Wow. So the first glider is it actually in that in that helicopter, a little piece of fabric. So, so just a little a little quick data point for you. But yeah, like I mentioned, I, I've worked uh, in in the public and private sectors uh, uh, for thirty plus years. Um, served in the military right after high school and got my first uh, really early uh, involvement in IT. And it really was uh, programming in hexadecimal. I remember, you know, I've worked in communications and, and some classified aspects of, of, of that, that world and really got into seeing uh, what IT could bring uh, to the Army at the time. So that was way back in the mid-80s at, the, at, that, at that duration. So that was my first, uh, not as quite uh, uh, far back as vacuum tubes, <laughs> but darn close. So, uh, but yeah, seven different agencies really have come up uh, through the ranks and and been blessed to have opportunities to to do what we do. And um, really, really uh, have seen uh, a lot. A lot of waves have changed and come back and changed again. So you see, you know, after uh, after a duration of time, you start seeing patterns emerge. And I love to talk to you about what those patterns are as we go through our chat today. So. What brought you into IT to begin with? What, what, what was yeah. kind of the spark for you? I mean, you said the Army, but you could have stopped, right? You, when you get out of the Army, you, could, you didn't need to keep doing that. Uh, right. What kept right. you going in this kind of career? Yeah, I just saw what IT could do, uh, regardless of, of what organization or what, what mission, the, the, uh, uh, the potential of, of bringing in automation to things. And, and at the time in the 80s, we were just, just starting this world, right? Just starting to, to have computers, just starting to do, to do uh, uh, email, just starting to communicate across the enterprise. And, and I remember, you know, we were, I was with an engineering uh, firm at the time and seeing uh, from hand-drawn uh, images where you use a pencil eraser to to actually using um, a CAD system to do things and how you can bring in automation and and as a young project manager to see what you can use with a Gantt chart to see dependencies and to see resources and to bring in automation to uh, you know to the manual work that was done. I just saw endless possibilities, and and I've worked uh, you know for for Compaq and HP. These are Fortune for, Fortune 50 companies, you know, serving the federal community, and just to see what capabilities that a a true engineering firm could bring to uh, to advancing you know what we're doing. It just it's just endless, you know. More Moore's law, everything doubles. You know, we were just seeing the advancements, and 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 as a as a as sort of a, a practice, I just saw this as something that was unique, something that was special, something that was emerging. So the timing was right. Uh, you know, so I said, hey, that's really where I want to focus my my career to. And like I said, the stars lined up. I was blessed, and and here we are today, thirty plus years later. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you're not doing project management today. You're doing some even cooler stuff. So, I mean, based on the fact you kind of, you mentioned you started in project management and of course now you're in, in, in the chief data officer and you're doing digital transformation. W what's that path look like? I mean, did you, did you stay in project management doing, doing programs or did you, before you transitioned into sort of management positions, what was that look like uh, for you in terms of IT career? Yeah, it really wasn't scripted. I, I would say, um, you know, looking back on it, I did see, uh, you know, multiple 
uh, multiple opportunities open up in an organization. So I really didn't sit back 30 plus years ago and say, here's the path that I want to be on. I'm going to start as a coder and be a project manager and then end up to, to and, and have been the CIO at other agencies and ended up here. Uh, I just saw uh, challenging things. I just saw opportunities that got me out of my comfort zone. And after you make the first jump, Jeremy, it's really not that scary after the second and third jump to the seventh jump, right? So that first jump, it was very scary. That's where I left federal, uh, well, I left uh, federal service and went to look uh, went to work for the private sector. That's a big jump. So being a, a, a fellow federal employee, you know, you know, sort of the uncertainties. But, you know, um, I, I would say, you know, I'm, per, I'm pretty uh, uh, willing to take that that risk. I'm, I'm willing to see where I can help and get out of my comfort zone and add value. So that's that's something that I've always been comfortable with, you know, um, and and the opportunities just just really evolve, you know, just sort of evolved. Right. Um, I, I would say another thing is uh, set your goals high. Uh, you, you don't want to just be comfortable with with where you are. So you always want to challenge yourself. You always want to continue your education. Uh, you always want to make sure um, you know you 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 link to mission, and that's that's important for our federal space. But you know, as a you know, as an industry partner too, the value you're bringing to mission is equally as important. So so look for those opportunities to get out of your comfort zone and and just do something different. That's true. That is so true. So you've been in IT for a while now, uh, we, you know, 80s till now. Mm -hmm. So you've seen a lot about how we've evolved over the years. What is something that we're still doing or, or we are doing newly that you think we might want to consider changing? You know, something that you, you, if you had the, the, the power, you know, it, to change it. Uh, for everybody, what's something you you think we should consider? Yeah, I, I think this is um, this is an opportunity. So, so I think a lot of folks that deliver IT really heavily depend on the compliance aspect of things. So you have um, you know you have scorecards, you have uh, uh, different metrics you have to meet, you have different values you bring into mission. All those are extremely important. The way you measure those those uh, uh, those outcomes, the value you're bringing in, is very very important. But I would say um, use those as as sort of a tertiary uh, uh, part of your conversation. You know, make sure that folks are aware that you have to do those compliance activities, but don't lead with them because mm -hmm. what it does is it looks like a tax. It looks like a a burden to mission. So so when when an IT professional comes to the table, say, okay, what can I do to advance the outcome of mission? And and I'll give you a really good example. What we're working on right now within NASA is is we're transforming NASA using digital as a lever. So basically, we're saying, how can we bring in digital to increase mission delivery by 20 to 25% over the next three to five years? So those are measurable, measurable uh, outcomes, measurable things. Uh, and then we're seeing, uh, then have a discussion with the business where you can take a manual business process and bring in automation to improve things, for example. And that is in one of our key, our key thrusts for process transformation. So, so, and then, and then that really gives you a richer conversation that really gives you a equal seat at the table. Uh, cause, cause, uh, the business really doesn't want to start with a, you know, Fatora, Fatora scorecard, you know, that really isn't. <laughs> A connection to them. It is something we need to be concerned about because what are all these scorecards do and, and what are all these measurements do? It changes the behavior, changes the culture of an organization. Absolutely critical, but we don't have to, as an IT community, we don't have to start with that, right? Sure. It, it is it, for transparency. It is good to let people know, but, but, but discuss mission, discuss a value that you're going to bring in as a provider of a service, for example, you know, what is that value to mission, right? And then I, I, I would argue if you do that, you build the trust, you build the value, you build the actual out outcomes that you're, you're going to bring to that organization. Mm, that is so important. I mean, I, I have worked for a few IT organizations that drove the card, right? Drove the score and making sure we had a passing score or making sure we hit the mark on the scorecard. I think you're right. Let's talk about 
the underlying change we're trying to make that will just make that card happen naturally. That's a much more important thing. I, I like that. It is. And it's a balance, Jeremy. It's not, uh, you know, it's, it's not this or that it's a balance, you know, you, you, you do have to do that. Uh, you know, it is important, but, but again, what are you bringing by doing that scorecard? What are you bringing to advance the mission of the organization that you're part of? Hmm. Wow. That's interesting. So, so where do you see yourself or, or where do you see the role of the chief data officer kind of heading into the future? Now I know that role is very young for the federal hmm. space. So where's that headed off to? What, what's, what's our, what, where, I mean, what's our roadmap kind of look like? Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, as you mentioned, I'm sort of dull hatted, right? Uh, the chief, the first chief data officer for NASA and very, very important role. I mean, this is really looking at uh, data as a strategic asset for the agency. So if you can look at it, we like to describe uh, data being the jet fuel that drives NASA, right? So it is uh, 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 not, not uh, within one, boundary within one container of the organization, not within one or, you know, part of the organization, but the opportunity is how do we make that uh, really transparent? How do we make that available to folks? And, and here's the interesting thing, because um, uh, we actually did a listening tour uh, last year, uh, last summer, early COVID was the first, first time we actually sat down with all the officers in charge and we talked about transformation and we talked about data. And, and, and in the discussion, we saw the top levels of the, of the organization. So this is a cultural comment. Top levels of the organization knew the importance of, of making data available for better decision making. Uh, the younger generation actually demanded that we start with transparency out of the box because they could achieve so much more if they could get the information uh, without organizational boundaries. The opportunity is, and this is the cultural shift is, working with that mid-level of the organization to not think that they need to be the value add to explain data, to explain information or control, but but also li by liberating it, not for um, um, a specific purpose, because NASA is outstanding in, in best in class in, in, in what we're doing. We just develop it in stovepipes. We develop it in containers and, and starting in, a, in an open, um, uh, um, you know, open environment is is really a, a different muscle. Mm -hmm. So so showing up a little differently, working with that mid level management, and then working with transformation. So as I mentioned, we're I'm part of the business innovation office uh, uh, that actually is using digital as a lever to transform. That's our first in, uh, uh, instance of this. So we're taking a look at. Uh, uh, business process automation, right? We're taking a look at model-based engineering for everything for the next propulsion. You know, we're taking a look at uh, uh, a artificial learning and machine learning. We're taking a look at culture and workforce. So all that is bundled in to our transformational effort to not only technically, you know, uh, automate or technically uh, take a look at our manual processes and move forward, but also those aspects of what we're doing, right? So uh, of, of adding value to mission. And then, and then really lastly is really the culture and workforce, right? What are we doing to, to change that culture of sharing first open for data for this example? Uh, but what are we doing to educate our workforce that, that, hey, it is greater value if they start a, in a different place, right? Mm -hmm. And then are we giving our, our people the skills they need to, to be successful in that new world. So, so those are the things we're working on with our transformation effort. And I will tell you, Jeremy, the way we're doing this with design thinking, and these are all IT uh, really practices and methodologies, right? Uh, we're really building solutions with our, with our mission directorates, with the, with the business of NASA uh, to where we're going for. We're using a transformation architecture to do a design and a end state of what we're building to, right? So all these things sort of stitch together and into that transformation engine to make sure we're adding greater value to mission. Wow, that's amazing. Well, Ron, I mean, we could talk all day, but I'll, I'll give you back your day. It's sunny outside today, and I, I imagine uh, you don't want to catch some air. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Thank you, Jeremy. And it was good to see you as always. You take care, and I'll, I'll talk to you soon.